Glassdoor. And today I'm going to talk about finding a good program to get your master's or get a certificate in in the instructional design, instructional technology field. Um, I'll focus, I'll talk a little bit about PhD, but I'm really just focusing on the master's and the, you know, certificate level student who's, you know, considering a career change or they're in K-12 to and they want to go to corporate or, you know, they're just graduating from undergrad, they're not sure what to do, they're looking for a program. All right, so how do you find a program of instructional design? Obviously, you know, Google searching and going to the universities you know of, that kind of thing. But how do you know if a program's good or not? You know, the unfortunate thing about our field is there's no real ranking system. So how do you find a quality program? Regardless of how you, what you're looking for, even if you're looking, you know, for an MBA or something, what I'm telling you is really vital to any master's or graduate degree in general. So let me talk about some of my you know, main points that I, I tell students they should be looking for. And obviously I teach in a master's program, so I am biased towards my program, and I always say my program is the best, but I truly believe that. So I'm gonna tell you some of the things you should be looking for if you're looking you know, for a program. And hey, I was you 15 to 17 years ago looking for a master's program as well, so I had to go through this process, I understand. Um, so let me talk about some of the things. So first of all, okay, so the focus of the program. So obviously, as I just told you, you know, if you're a K-12 educator looking for a program, if you're in corporate looking to do a career change, that kind of thing. So different programs will focus on different things. So there are really three main focus areas instructional design programs focus on. Some will focus on K-12 only. So if you see like they're called educational technology, um, masters of Arts. Um, those are usually signs that they're only focused on K-12. to Not always, but in general those are some signs they might only be focused on K-12. to um, Very rarely do I see programs only focused on corporate um, unless they're f in the for-profit for colleges, the for-profit schools. Those are only focusing usually on corporate, but most instructional design programs will focus on both, especially if you see like a Master of Science, um, you know, like my program focuses on K-12 to and corporate um, extensively each one. You know, we have faculty that specialize in each one of those areas. So there are a lot of programs to focus on both. Um, and then the third area that a program can focus on is research. Now, if you're going to one of the, looking at a master's level program at one of the schools that also has a PhD, those programs are traditionally geared towards research so that their students move on to the PhD level. Um, they're not really usually geared towards K-12 to or corporate as much. So I would say if, you know, if you're looking for a career change, you're, you're, I would say you look for the program that's solely dedicated to that, you know, that has that as its main focus. Um, so I'd say that's the first thing. Make sure the program's focus matches your goals. Next, who are the professors in the, in the program? If you go to their website, and you can't, if you're looking online and you can't figure out who the professors are of this program, that's an issue because you need to know who's going to be teaching you. You know, and then not only who the professors are, so when you find the professors' names, what do they do? What is their background? You know, what is their, can you see their resume? Um, do the professors have a website? So the professors should have a website because this is instructional design, we use a lot of technology. You know, I teach web design classes, so I should have a website. Uh, you should be able to find my website and my resume. If you can't see who the faculty are on their main website, that's a, a red flag in my book. You should know who the faculty are. Then when you look at the faculty, what do you have to look at? You know, first of all, are the, do they have full-time faculty or are they all adjuncts? The problem with all adjuncts is that adjuncts have another job, which is their main job, which is their main priority. That class they're teaching is their second priority. You don't want to go to a program where all the faculty are teaching classes which are their second priority. You want to go to a program where the classes are their first priority, right? Um, so you want to have at least 50% or more full-time dedicated faculty who are going to be your mentors, that you're going to have for multiple courses, um, that you're going to get to know and who are going to be able to find you jobs. You know, that's super, super important to have faculty dedicated to that program. You know, that's one of the biggest, biggest things you really have to focus on. But then, who are these professors? So, like, you want to look at their background. So, take me, for example. Um, my background is in corporate. I held a corporate job for multiple years, um, and I still own a consulting firm and work in the corporate sector. 
um, and we have faculty in my program that are K to 12. So, but you need to make sure that the faculty actually, first of all, have work experience. You know, unless you're at the research, you're going the research route, then you're looking for faculty who are experts in research. But if you're looking for faculty, you're trying to get a job, you need a faculty who's doing that, who did that as well. So you have to know who the faculty are. You got to find their resumes. Look at their resumes. Look, did this faculty member actually work before? And what I mean by that is, no, they didn't just do an internship at some school. No, they didn't do like a few consulting projects here. Did, did they hold a full-time job for a few years somewhere at some corporation or K-12 school? You know, were they a teacher at a K-12 school for like two to three years at least? You know, and the biggest, one of the biggest things I see in our field is that, you know, I worked from 2003 to like 2010. That's including when I was getting my doctorate. I was an instructional designer. You know, but it's 2019 right now, so we're nine years ahead of that. Things have changed in the field. So I own a consulting firm, so I'm out there consulting all the time. But if I wasn't doing that, you know, you got to make sure the faculty are still practicing. I'm teaching students how to get a job. I'm teaching them the skills they need to get a job. I need to be out there doing it, showing that I can. Faculty in medicine, faculty in law, all have practices and are practicing. Faculty in our field, not always. So make sure the faculty are practicing what they're telling. Okay, next thing, the program's website. Does the program have a website, first of all? Is the website extensive, like you know, comprehensive? Can you see what courses they, what are the courses? The descriptions of the courses, who the faculty are, which I already suggested. Um, can you see what I need to do to apply? Is it easy? Can you see who the program chair or, or program coordinator, or whatever they're calling it at that university, can you see who that is? Is there a contact person? Is there an actual person? It's not just a blank contact form. Is there like, hey, I can call this number and talk to a faculty member. Hey, I can, I can, here's a person who is in that program that I can talk to, not just like a school representative. Those are little signs, little flags of things you want to be, you know, aware of. You should be able to find people who are actually teaching in that program pretty easily. Oh, and do, you know, do they have, does the program, is there like a, some kind of alumni page or, uh, you know, whether that's social media, like my program, we use LinkedIn, but mostly we use Facebook for our alumni. So all of our alumni are connected together. We're always posting jobs and stuff. Ask, hey. Where's your alumni page? Is there some kind of alumni page? How do I contact, you know, do we have something? There has to be something, because if they're, they're not keeping track of their alumni, how do they know who has jobs, who's where, and, and everything? You know, that goes to show if the program really cares about you or not. Um, and then, you know, are the students getting jobs? What kind of jobs are they getting? Do they say that on the website? Can you find that information out? You know, I have uh, pretty much, I don't have any problems getting students jobs. I can tell you our salaries that our students are getting. I can tell you what kind of jobs they're getting. But I have a lot of that even just on a plane to see on our website. I have a list of probably 30 companies where our students are at. And they're at hundreds. I picked a few companies to tell you where our students are at on our website. But that should be there because you need to know, like, what can I do with this degree? And it does matter where you go because I have companies calling me every semester saying, hey, we want to interview your students. I have alumni coming back and saying, hey, I know our program's really good, so I want to get students from our program. You know, so make sure that kind of stuff is there at the school you're choosing um, because it really does help getting a job, especially an internship. Um, so, and that leads me to my next point, make sure there's an internship. If there's no internship, that's a, a huge red flag, huge, huge red flag. Um, our field is all about work experience. You have to have, you're not going to get a job if you don't get an internship. You really have to have one. So, you know, make sure there's at least one internship, if not more. You know, I send my students, so my students do an internship. They do a capstone project, which is also an internship, so that's two. Then they have several classes where they have to work with real clients on a project. So they probably leave my program with maybe four to five different experiences that are all internships on their resume, um, minimum. So you know, make sure you're getting that experience or you're not going to get a job. It would be really tough to justify hiring someone with no experience. So make sure you have that. Um, and you know, is there a way to, can you talk to a student if you would like to? Like, you know, sometimes I have applicants that want to talk to a student and I have no problem setting that up. You know, but I can just send potential students right to my alumni page and they can see all the discussion that happens between our alumni and students all the time so easily that they know like, hey, 
you know, it's active. Um, and then one of the final points is that you need to be able to talk to a faculty member. I recommend everyone interested in applying to a program speak to an actual full-time faculty member at that program. If you can't, do, if they can't provide that to you, that's a sign of what kind of mentorship you're going to have. You're probably not going to have very good mentorship. You want to have an excellent mentorship experience. If you can't talk to a dedicated full-time faculty in that program, that's, you know, that says something about the, the level of support you're going to get because support is really vital. You know, who you're going with, your co if it's a cohort or not, um, who you're going to school with, you're going to be connected to those students forever as I was in my master's program. I'm still connected to, to them. You know, 19 years later, we still talk and I can, we can help each other and stuff. You know, and now I have this huge alumni network of students that I know, and it, it really does make a difference because you form this community within the field at all these different companies. So when you're applying to jobs, you can very easily send your resume out to a few friends, and even if they don't have a position, they know of something. And it, it just, you know, this web of connections really grows and really helps. And our field is not that big, so you want to have that, those connections. Um, so those are the main things to look for um, when you're looking for a master's program in our field. So do your research. Programs in our field are not all the same. So you really need to, you know, do research. My biggest thing is, you know, talk to faculty. Make sure you can find out who the faculty are. Make sure you're talk you can talk to a person. Make sure their website has all their information. You know, you're looking, if, if something seems like it's a little weird, like a red flag, like some of the things I mentioned, it probably is. You know, your gut tells you a lot about what you should be doing. So, you know, listen to it in those cases. Um, anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.